Every Thursday evening in North America, S2 Underground hosts the Ghost Net, which is an amateur radio net for prepared citizens who just want to share news in a censorship-free environment. Because if the operators themselves own all the infrastructure between point A and point B, they really can't effectively be censored without jamming the radio waves or something like that. So, and sometimes S2 springs a surprise ghost net on us in a simulated emergency scenario. Or, or if something big pops off in the world, and um, like a war or like when Trump was almost assassinated. So I have to have my gear ready to go, and I can just throw it on my back and head outside. And I know not everyone has a radio set up in order to be able to participate in these ghost nets. So I just wanted to help showcase possibilities and generate interest. So I thought I would share my specific setup today. I have my antenna set up in an inverted V configuration. It's a dipole antenna um, with a wire sloping down that direction and sloping down that direction. And then I hook up the feed line to my Yesu FT891, which I have in this man pack. Let's take a look at what's inside the man pack. Um, and this is not necessarily an ideal setup, but here is the laptop I'll use for JS8 call. Some trash bags in case it rains to protect everything. And uh, these packs are all from Gigaparts. It's their Explorer kind of modular system. It's worked okay for me. Um, I've got the FT891 in there. And um, I put the battery inside this case, which was actually supposed to be for the ICOM 705. Um, but it fit the battery pretty well, so that's what holds the battery. Uh, the battery I can recharge with solar panels, which I don't have in here at the moment. I can also run an inverter um, or other auxiliary things. Um, and then here I have a USB splitter that uh, and a and a DigiRig mobile for getting my audio connection to the computer. And here is JS8 call working. I'm on the standard JS8 call frequency at the moment, not the ghost net frequency. Um, and uh, I sent out a heartbeat request, and I didn't get uh, an SNR back from somebody, but I got an SNR request from somebody, which was interesting. Um, it's still kind of early, like, it often depends on the time of day, so could be that the atmosphere is still absorbing the HF frequencies. Um, but uh, I can look up this call sign and see how far my signal propagated, because I know he received me because he sent me a request. I won't lie to you, as I was learning how to do this, I struggled really hard with the settings, both on the radio, in the program, and even all the hardware and connections. Um, it, I probably spent at least 40 hours with trial and error trying to figure stuff out. Your mileage will vary. Maybe it'll work perfectly the first time. I hope it does because that'll spare you a lot of swearing and stuff that I had to go <laughs> through. Um, or maybe it'll be like me where you're just struggling to get your radio to work with it. But um, keep at it because once you find a configuration that works... You can just leave it, and <laughs> every time you plug and play, it'll go. But, uh, yeah. All right, we're on the ghost net frequency, and let's try a heartbeat. So a heartbeat will send out a signal to noise request, and people will automatically reply who can detect it. All right, now it's transmitting. The red light is on. I think I'm transmitting at about 80 watts right now. You should transmit at the lowest level to get the message through. Yeah, and you can hear people coming back. Oh, 
nice. So we, wow, really bad SNR. <laughs> but they heard us. Parents, oh no, that's not me. All right, here comes my message. Lots of people talking, but I'm gonna send it. It's going to take two minutes. All right, on the last section of the message. All right, while you're transmitting, you can't receive, so you gotta find a good time to do it. And there's that trade-off. All right, just finishing up a longer version of this message with more details, including the names. And there it went. I actually turned it on fast mode. I didn't dare go to turbo mode because I want people to be able to, to receive it. Hello from Central Florida. Now the way I see it, there are two main barriers to entry for the average person to getting into all this radio stuff. One is the cost and the other is the technical, not necessarily ability that you need to have, but you need to, you need to learn a lot of technical details <laughs> to, to learn all this stuff. And you also technically need a ham radio license if you're gonna do this the right way in times of rule of law and all that. Um, but that's not too hard to get. Um, but the cost, like, I think I did this in a fairly cheap way, and all of this you see here is still well over a thousand dollars. The radio, I didn't go with the least expensive, but I went with like the second cheapest, but still good option I could find, which was the ASU FT891, which was around six hundred and fifty dollars. And then you need to get a bunch of peripheral stuff. Uh, you don't need to get solar panels, especially if you're not going to be spending long times out in the woods. Um, but you'll need to get an antenna. You'll need to get some coax cable, a battery, and way to charge it. Um, and let me think. I mean, that's all you need to get started. And antennas can be pretty simple. You can use just the correct length of wire um, and then connected to the coax in the middle. Um, and that's all you really need to get started. Uh, and I, despite all the learning I've been doing, I still don't feel like I understand antennas well enough. So it could be that my antenna is not tuned properly and so I'm not getting out as far as I'd like, but um, people are hearing me, so it is working. So all that to say, you may not want to start here. You may actually want to start with just receiving airwaves. And you won't be able to transmit, but if you get a small SDR, like this one from RTL SDR, SDR stands for Software Defined Radio. And uh, they're pretty inexpensive. This came with this rabbit ear antenna and it's been working great for me just with the antenna out of the box. Altogether, it was only 40 something dollars. And you can receive across the spectrum. Um, so you can receive HF signals or you can receive FM signals like the radio you might have on your car. You can receive um, AM signals, all, all, of, all of it, and you know, because it does the processing with software. Um, so all the different modulation types and um, so I, I've been able to use this to receive tons of HF signals on JS8 call um, and very inexpensively. So this is probably where you might want to start, but you won't be able to send out news reports with it. So 
It's a big jump from this to this. I wish there was another baby step in between, and maybe there will be someday, but right now I don't really see it. So yeah, that's my setup, and if you have feedback, if you're more of an expert than me, please share. Uh, and if you're a newbie, I hope I've given you some ideas about ways to start. And um, definitely look up more videos from people who have more expertise than me. I recommend, you know, Tech Prepper. Uh, S2 himself has some great videos. And, um, and there's, yeah, there's just scores of, of ham radio uh, YouTubers and other people out there that have some great resources. So I hope that you will look into them. And that's all I really had to say on this topic. Um, if this video takes off, maybe I'll start S6 Underground, <laughs> which is, you know, the communication-specific side of the the Army staff structure. So that's where S2 comes from, is the intelligence gathering. So, uh, yeah, we, we, as prepared citizens, have a lot of work to do to to get ready in terms of communications because right now we are wholly dependent on um, the internet and cell cell connections. So, so that's my intro to the ghost net, and I hope you'll look into it. I'll leave some links to S2 Underground's videos on the topic, as well as some other resources to get started. Uh, I really hope more and more people will get into this because we really need to be resilient and have more people to communicate with. So, as he would say, fight in the shade. And to everyone else, I'll just say 73.